Okay, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome back. We're going to get started for the afternoon. Uh, we'll be uh, presenting several awards next for related to source water protection and source sustainability uh, to three different awardees uh, who have um, who, who have been selected for this year's awards. Uh, after we do the awards, we have two more sessions and we'll run through to 2.30 this afternoon and then we'll conclude. Um, every year we give out uh, an award or awards related to um, the protection and those entities, whether it's a water system, a community, uh, or another organization that has done great work to protect drinking water resources uh, or to preserve the availability through water conservation or other measures to improve efficiency uh, in uh, with respect to using uh, source water. And so I'm going to just read through briefly a few of these uh, awardees and what they've done over the last year. And, uh, and um, on, in, in normal times, if we were all together, we would have them up front in uh, at the Groponi Center and uh, present them an award, uh, get a, give a, get a, a photo op, and then do some press uh, after. We will release a press release from DES related to these awards shortly after the event today. Um, I'd like to, in advance, congratulate all of them. Uh, so the first, uh, the first organization or community actually that we're presenting an award for in 2021 is the City of Claremont uh, for our Source Water Protection Award, and. It relates to a uh, source water protection planning activity and security improvements that they've done over the last year that we thought was exemplary. And just to read a little bit about um, the city of Claremont and the Whitewater Reservoir, one of three reservoirs that they uh, manage as part of the primary source for their community's water system. Uh, this water, this reservoir is approximately 100 years old. Uh, the city of Claremont purchased this land. Um, over 100 years ago for the purpose of augmenting its public water supply. The effort and foresight to establish the system was considerable as Claremont now celebrates the 100th anniversary of this reservoir. This, that milestone coincides with a significant effort the city made to update and improve a watershed based source water protection plan that now serves as its roadmap to better protect the Whitewater Reservoir. This reservoir um, supplies 70% of the city's drinking water. And as noted in the plan, the reservoir is pristine in nature and is in all practical terms irreplaceable. It is one of the city's most valuable assets. So published last summer, the action plan for the Whitewater Reservoir, Claremont, Claremont's primary source of drinking water, promotes good watershed management uh, based upon sound, sound scientific information plans full of data and information characterizing the watershed resources and characteristics of the reservoir. Importantly, the plan outlines clear objectives to monitor water quality data, reduce non-point source pollution, and expand public education. Other priorities that are in this plan include controlling wildlife, including geese and beaver, to reduce bacteria and other pathogens, and implementing best practices for recreational land uses and forestry to limit non-point source pollution and land conservation, among others. In addition to this plan and the continuing work of that plan, the city has recently taken steps to improve security and public education in the watershed, supported in part by uh, our local source water protection grant funding from DES. And they're also working to uh, update and modernize their forest management plan for the watershed, for the Whitewater Reservoir watershed, and prioritize source protection as part of a sustainable forest management approach. So for all of these efforts, DES is providing Claremont its 2021 Source Water Protection Award. So congratulations to the city, uh, the Department of uh, Public Works, the committee and, and community members that served on the Planning uh, Development Committee, and to Grant State Rural Water Association, which was a partner in developing this plan. So in our audience today, virtually, is Rob Oricella, who worked on the plan as part of the, the, of the local community. Uh, planning Committee, Alex Gleason, who runs the Department of Public Works in Claremont, and Emily Volgmore, who is uh, a source water protection specialist with Granite State Rural Water Association. So again, congratulations to Claremont 
um, there is actually a plaque. <laughs> so one will be sent to you um, in the mail. So they mentioned earlier uh, in my opening of the event, there has been some uh, significant effort to coordinate um, financial resources to protect high priority or critical water supply lands recently through the Merrimack River Watershed Council. So our next nominee and awardee, rally, our next awardee is the Merrimack River Watershed Council. If you're not familiar with the council, it was founded in 1978 to address the issue of pollution in the Merrimack River. As you may remember that at that time, it used to turn different colors uh, related to the mills. But today, Merrimack, the river, is a water supply source for Nashua and several communities in Massachusetts. And the, Mer the Manchester Waterworks is now currently in the process of developing a well collector under the river, a well collector system under the river to serve Manchester and a dozen other communities in southern New Hampshire. The Council is a community-based organization that works with a diverse set of stakeholders and decision makers to address threats that range from combined sewer overflows to climate, stormwater. Um, they work on education and engage communities in protection and promote access to the river and its tributaries in New Hampshire and Massachusetts. The Council's many initiatives and uh, accomplishments that serve to protect the Merrimack River are too numerous to go into here. We wanted to highlight a couple of things, including a three-year partnership with the U.S. Forests, the New Hampshire Division of Forests and Lands, UNH Cooperative Extension, and similar organizations in Massachusetts on a landscape scale to restore and address forest fragmentation and climate change impacts, and have received $250,000 in grant money from the Forest Service to do that. Aside from those achievements, um, which are significant, today what we'd like to also mention is that the Merrimack River Watershed Council is being recognized for an even bigger statewide initiative, referred to as the New Hampshire Source Water Protection Partnership. So last month, the United States Department of Agriculture, the Natural Resources Conservation Service, which is part of the department, announced that the council proposal, which was submitted to their uh, to NRCS, for, a, for the statewide source water protection partnership will receive six point, um, just about $6.9 million to protect high priority source water protection areas, or source protection areas, sorry, source water areas, restore habitat and enhance climate resilience. Partners include NRCS, New Hampshire DES, and our bureau, As I'm sorry, and the department, sorry, let me say that again, the New Hampshire Drinking Water and Groundwater Trust Fund, Penichuk Corporation, the Society for the Protection of New Hampshire Forests and Southeast Land Trust. The partnership will focus on two types of activity, permanent protection of water supply lands and land management practices, primarily on land protected by easements. This new partnership represents an unprecedented opportunity to protect water supply land with substantial financial uh, federal funds matched by the Drinking Water and Groundwater Trust Fund, among other sources of money. So today in the virtual audience is Matt Thorne, who's the executive director of the Merrimack River Watershed Council, and he's accepting this award on behalf of the council. So congratulations, Matt, and congratulates, congratulations to the Merrimack River Watershed Council. We look forward to working with you uh, as this new partnership uh, evolves and continues to develop. Well, as we talked a fair amount in the morning about drought and the impacts of climate, um, our third award uh, awardee and our, and our award to, um, is an award to the Hooksett Village Water Precinct for uh, our Source Water Sustainability Award. And this award is being presented to the Hooksett Village Water Precinct in recognition of their outstanding effort to maintain the sustainability of the precinct sources through asset management, strategic planning and water efficiency outreach, and a commitment to proactive water loss control. Some highlights of their work include the completion of a comprehensive water system capacity study, which entailed, which entailed a comprehensive review of 60 years of water supply and demand data. The study identified their current future capacity and ability to provide water under a variety of conditions. Precinct completed, also the precinct completed an asset management plan update which among other things will be used to determine the water mains 
most in need of replacement and to establish a reprioritized set of improvements in the distribution system. They completed GIS mapping of the entire distribution system, which will enhance their leak detection and repair efforts. And since 2019, their leak repair response time has, de has decreased from eight weeks to less than a week. And they have fixed 27 leaks, which is estimated to save, have, have saved a total of 18 million gallons. Precinct has made significant efforts to enhance their monitoring of the water pumped from the wells distributed in the system and used by customers. The work has entailed a major overhaul of the upgrade of their SCADA system, implemented implementation of a source meter replacement and testing program, and an aggressive service meter upgrade program. The precinct learned from the 2016 drought and developed a simple source-specific water level based action plan that could be used as a guide for future drought responses. The plan was implemented during the 2020 drought with great success. So as a result of all of these activities, the water balance for the system has been reduced from approximately 20 gallons, uh, 20 million gallons in 2015 to less than a million gallons in 2020. And so for all of these efforts and many others, we're pleased to present the source water a sustainability award to the Hooksick Village Water Precinct. And I know Mike Herdon is in the audience as well as a number of commissioners. So again, thank you to all involved in, um, in making such great efforts uh, to conserve and sustain your source water. And with that, that is the conclusion of our awards presentations for the day. Again, congratulations to everyone who received an award this year.